Hi there, my name is Alinta Krauss and I am a digital interaction designer and digital artist. So storytelling and increasingly the storytelling that we're seeing embedded in digital activities, gaming and interactive experiences like the one behind me is a really sophisticated way of communicating the importance of existential risks. Narrative can give people the ability to learn how to make decisions about some of the biggest global issues of our time. It's so important that we understand these issues and narrative, storytelling and gamified experiences can help us to comprehend really large topics. Otherwise, topics like climate change, pandemics, technology or natural disasters might just be too abstract for us to fully comprehend until we've experienced them firsthand. It has been noted by researchers such as Brian Walsh that from a neurological perspective, our brains actually really struggle to comprehend very big existential risks. So breaking them down into narrative or creative structures helps us to see that bigger picture. Using a concept like narrative structures in digital games, serious games, or other interactive experiences isn't just something seen in art galleries or on your devices. This kind of content is used all over the place, including in policy making and the government, to help workers plot out decisions. A really nice publicly available example is the BBC's Climate Challenge Simulator game, where anyone can play as the leader of the European Union and select policies that last until the year 2100 to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. Having to balance the points of view of everyone on your council and coming up with something that works for everyone while reducing emissions shows some of the many ways of thinking needed to mitigate large risks. This is called gamification and simulation, where real-world scenarios are simulated with game goals or qualities in order to be used as learning or thinking tools. You might already be aware that simulations, or sims, are seen in many places as training tools and are particularly common now in assessing cybersecurity risk or in other jobs training like flight simulation. Here, a range of real-world scenarios are described as narratives and the player has to figure out the best course of action. You could say that all sims are in some way about mitigating and managing risks. One of the great things about digital technologies is they can help us to develop new ways of creative thinking and designing solutions to some of the world's biggest issues. And I think it's particularly important for young people to start thinking about the challenge of local and global issues in creative ways. An example of this is my own interactive experience called Prosthetics for a Changing Climate. It's a big touchscreen display for getting people thinking about the rather niche example of how we might help native wildlife survive during bushfires. The gimmick here is that the user designs face armor that protects the wildlife from smoke inhalation or burns by combining a series of options. With certain choices made, you receive pieces of narrative text, which are written experiences by wildlife volunteers who experienced the 2020 Australian bushfires. But the bigger idea here is to start thinking creatively about how to contribute positive solutions to existential risks. From a creator's perspective, designing digital experiences means using skills that are transferable to a range of areas, such as IT, education, policy making, design and arts, games creation, and even more. So the skills you'll be exploring today aren't just precursors to risk mitigation or storytelling, but are the kinds of tasks you can go on to explore as digital skill sets. These may include mapping structures and locative and object-oriented thinking. These feed into future potential career areas, such as working with virtual reality, augmented reality, digital maps, website design and digital communication, which might be areas of interest for you to consider as future career paths. We can use narrative, gamification, and what's known as serious games to communicate concepts like existential risk in a safe space. 
So serious games are essentially games that have a serious message and aren't purely focused on entertainment. So they might be used in education, the sciences, or even the military. Sometimes they're also known as art games if the main focus is the concept rather than the entertaining nature of the game. An example of a perhaps semi-serious game that deals with an existential risk is the work Curio Creatures by myself and artist Jason Nelson. It's a locative game that you find all over a city using QR codes, and in it, you collect interactive animated character cards of different science fiction animals onto your smartphone. Each animal has its own backstory and powers, a bit like Pokemon, but these are creatures who have had to adapt to a future dystopian version of Australia, where worse natural disasters and climate change have caused extreme adaptations and mutations. One thing that is especially interesting about this game is that it must be played outside in an Australian city. So you're walking through the location that is part of the existential risk and experiencing that immersion of imagining what this place will be like in hundreds of years and who survives. Thanks very much for listening and I hope you enjoy looking at existential risks and narrative games and digital technologies.